North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. Pay for it. We're gonna be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you gonna find the money? And we know that this burden falls particularly in an unequal way on black folks and other people of color, and we just gotta go ahead and put that in the testimony as well. But if you, yes, and especially black women, and if you are poor, or among the working poor, or the barely middle class in these United States of America, and you do what you were asked to do, what you were told to do, the thing, the very thing that you were told that was gonna lift you up, and you do that thing, and then you find yourselves walking across a stage with a backpack full of debt in, on your back and debt in your hands and a degree and it is immoral to do so and we calling it out. I wanted to make sure I was on, like always. Anyway, uh, welcome to my Substack. Um, I probably said that in my previous video because I wasn't there. I didn't know uh, if I was going to be putting this on Substack or my YouTube channel. Anyway, um, the story here is, why is Russia cutting off natural gas to Bulgaria and Poland? Russia's gas, Gazprom says it is, it is halting natural gas supplies to Poland and Bulgaria escalating tensions between the Kremlin and Europe over energy and Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the dependent. Anyway, so what did energy giant uh, Gazprom said was cutting off Poland and Bulgaria's because Bulgaria because they refused to pay in Russian rubles as President Vladimir Putin has demanded. European leaders have national gas contracts spell out a payment in euro or dollar in that can't be suddenly changed by one side. Poland has taken long-term steps to insulate itself from a cutoff, such as building an import terminal for uh, liquefied gas that comes by ship and had planned to cancel it, its import deal with Gazprom at year's end anyway. Bulgaria says it has enough gas for now. Still, the open question about what the change could mean have sent shutters through energy markets raising uncertainty about wh uh, whether natural gas uh, could be used, could be uh, cut off to either European countries and cause a major hit to the economy. President Putin's decree that has that gas payments made by unfriendly countries must be denominated in rubles raises the risk that supply could be cut off to other European countries when payments are due in the next few weeks. Edward Gardner of Capital Economist has said in a report. The Kremlin warned of that possibility of countries don't pay for energy supply in rubles, but Russia also relies on oil and gas sales to fund its government as sanctions have squeezed its financial system. Under the new payment system, the Kremlin has said importers 
would have to establish an account in dollars or euros at Russia's third largest bank, Gazprom Bank, then a second account in rubles. The importer would pay the gas bill in euros or dollars and direct the payment to exchange the money for rubles. European Commissioner, uh, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Wednesday that paying in rubles violates European Union sanctions and that companies will contract with contracts should not ex exceed to the public to the Russian demands. What is Putin after? Yeah, what is Putin after? Putin, uh, because Putin's order for ruble and payments targets unfriendly countries, it can be seen as retaliation for the sanctions that had cut off many Russian banks from uh, international finance transactions and led some Western companies to abandon their business in Russia. Uh, Gazprom's decision to suspend delivery uh, deliveries to Poland and Bulgaria from today over their refusal to pay for Russian gas and rubles marks an escalation in Russian, uh, Russians' use of gas as political leverage, Garner wrote. The economic motives for demanding rubles aren't clear because Gazprom already has to sell 80% of its foreign earnings for rubles, so the boost to Russian currency could be minimal. One motive could uh, be political to show the public at home that Putin can dictate the terms of gas exports and by requiring uh, payments through Gazprom, Gazprom Bank, the move could discourage further sanctions against that bank. To cut off countries that have supported Ukraine, this could serve that function. Prime Minister Viktor Orban has agreed to Putin's payments arrangement on the same pipeline system. Simona Taglia Pietra, an energy expert and senior fellow at the uh, Bruegel uh, think tank in Brussels, has said, moving this way, Russia is leveraging EU fragmentation. It's, divided, it's a divide and rule strategy, which is why we need a coordinated EU effort. What is the state of gas supply in Europe? Mm -hmm. A coordinated US and European Union sanctions accept payments for oil and gas. That is a white House concession to European allies who are who are much more dependent on energy from Russia, which provides 40% of uh, European uh, Europe's gas, 25% of its oil uh, oil at a couple cost of 850 million a day. Many aren't happy that European utilities are still buying energy from Russia, which on average got 43% of its annual government revenue from oil and gas sales between 2011 and 2020, according to U.S. Energy Form, uh, Information Administration. Russia's decision to reduce gas sale outside of long-term contracts before the war contributing to a winter energy crunch that drove up prices served as a wake-up call that Europe, Europe's dependent on Russian energy left it vulnerable. The war has meant a, la a fast re uh, reassessment of decades of energy policy in which cheap gas from Russia supported the European economy. But cutting off uh, Europe's natural gas doesn't benefit Russia either. When it comes to oil, Russia could, in theory, ship oil by tanker elsewhere, such as to India and China, countries that are energy hungry and not taking part in sanctions. But gas is, an is another matter. The gas pipeline system from major deposits in northern Russia's Yarn uh, Yamal Peninsula, uh, Peninsula uh, to Europe doesn't connect to the pipeline leading to China and Russia has only limited facilities to export a liquefied gas by ship. Well, if memory serves me right, they had just made a deal to do that as far as the ability of pipeline. So who knows about that? Uh, Europe's economy would struggle without Russia's uh, Russian natural gas, although the impact would, uh, would vary based on how much countries use. Econ economist estimates very wide, widely for, mo for loss. An, an analysis said, said, uh, said in a recent study that a total into recession. Uh, Germany, the continent's largest economy, is heavily dependent on Russia energy. Its central bank said a, a total cutoff could mean 5% points of lost econ economic output and higher inflation. Inflation is already at record highs and making everything from groceries to raw materials more expensive, driven by soaring energy prices. The Bruegel think tank estimated that Europe would be 10% to 15% short of normal demand to get through the, the next winter heating season 
meaning exceptional measures would have to be taken to reduce gas use. What's Europe's, what is, what's Europe doing to reduce reliance on Russia gas? European leaders have said they can't afford the consequences of an immediate boycott. Instead, they plan to reduce Russia gas use as fast as possible. They're ordering more liquefied natural gas, which comes by ship, seeking more gas from pipelines from places like Norway or Azerbaijan, I guess, uh, accelerating the de deployment of wind and solar energy and pushing conservation measures. The aim is to cut use of Russian gas by two point by two thirds by the end of the year and completely by 2027. It remains to be seen, remains to be seen if that go, if that goal can be met in practice. There is a limit to liquefied gas supplies with exports of terminals running at capacity. Germany would, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Germany, which has no import terminals, uh, is looking to build two, but that will take years. Italy, which Yes, 40% of its gas from Russia has reached deals to replace about half the amount with Algeria, um, Azerbaijan, uh, Angola, and Congo, and is looking to increase imports from Qatar and Europe's under pressure to restock its underground reserves in time for, in time for, uh, for next winter's uh, heating demand. The situation is serious enough that Germany has declared an early warning of energy emergency, the, fir uh, the first of three stages. Well, I want to also bring up uh, Russia economic growth slows 1.6% in March uh, econ economy ministry. And this is from now ago, apparently. The first quarter, the economy expanded by 3.7% in year-on-year terms, the ministry said. Let's see. Russia expects the economy to contract by 8.8% in 2022 and its base case scenario, or yeah, base case scenario, or by 12.4% under a more conservative scenario. Yeah, and economy uh, ministry documents showed on Wednesday further evidence that sanctions pressure are taking their toll. Okay. <laughs> okay, so next one is uh, from the deep dive. The Russian ruble strengthens against euro US dollar despite sanctions. Russian, Euro, uh, Russian ruble strengthens against Euro US dollar despite sanctions. This is from yesterday. The Russian ruble continued to gain momentum against both the Euro and the US dollar as markets anticipate a major cascade of tax payments from the companies this week. The ruble on Tuesday rose about 0.90% from the previous day's trading sessions or session to around 74.25 per US dollar the highest in five months. Likewise, the ruble jumped by more than 95% against the euro to approximately 79.62, the highest in almost two years. The latest rally comes as traders prepare for companies to make a record 3 trillion ruble or 40.25 billion tax payments before the end of the week. Uh, analysts cited by RT News uh, anticipate the income tax payment will uh, support Russia's currency even higher, given that some export focused companies will be forced to sell foreign currency to make their payments. At the same time, the markets are also expecting the Bank of Russia to deliver a rate decision come Friday. The country's benchmark rate was increased by to 20% in March in an effort to m mitigate the effects of Western sanctions imposed in retaliation to Moscow's military operation in, Euro in Ukraine. However, at the beginning of April, Russia's central bank slashed the, the key rate to 17 uh, in response to a stabilizing of the country's economy, and some are now forecasting an additional rate decline to 15% at the end of the week. And someone has given me their thoughts on this. Two thoughts on Russia, ruble, and strengthens against Euro, uh, US, and anyway. Western media servicing NATO interests have rapidly run piles of doom and gloom reports about the collapse of the ruble. Now they are mostly passing over the, the counter trend. Mum is the word. Russian central bank rate was lowered from 20% to 70% as soon 
another cut, a rate cut will take place. Demand for the ruble is rising due to ruble use for natural gas payments and is crossing or uh, growing use in oil, coal, metals, wheat, and fertilizer exports. What will the advisors write for Biden to uh, Biden now to read uh, read from the teleprompter? Obama already uh, declared Russia economy in tatters in 2014, yet sanctions did not work back then and are not working today. Moreover, most of the world uh, most of the world has refused to follow the West. Countries like China, India, Brazil, Turkey, Iran. Mexico, uh, Southeast Asia, and the rest have refused to join. That makes the whole world a narrow group indeed. Okay, so the, 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 the other one's the same thing. Anyway, so let's see. And a little bit uh, about uh, U.S. Uh, oil news here. Uh, let's see. Crude oil, uh, WTI, Cushing, o Oklahoma, uh, as of a couple of days ago, Per barrel, ninety nine point sixty. Uh, this is yeah, uh, uh, product in dollars per gallon. So, uh, so that's uh, view history from nineteen eighty six to to today, basically. Uh, Brent or Europe uh, is ninety nine point twenty nine per barrel. New York Harbor regular, uh, three point two three one. Uh, U.S. Gulf Coast regular uh, 3.186. See the uh, Los Angeles, uh, one of the more expensive ones, 3.45. Uh, New York Harbor, as I just said, uh, that's for heating oil. It's uh, 4217. Ultra low sulfur number two diesel is at uh, New, uh, New York Harbor. 427, sorry, 4272. Uh, U.S. Gulf Coast uh, at pretty much $4. Net previous one is $4. Pretty much is between, um, let's see, crude oil, I think his bulk was 99.60. And Brent was bulk was 99.27. But I think, I think it's conventional oil, uh, gasoline is at $3, $3 in both New York. And U.S. Gulf Coast, uh, Los Angeles, uh, West Coast is three dollars, an average, I believe. Um, let's see. Uh, also, New York Harbor is four dollars. New York uh, Harbor, uh, ultra low sulfur uh, diesel is uh, four dollars. Basically, yeah, the average has actually gone down quite a bit as far as the part goes. And apparently, if I propane is now one like one one point two. I'm guessing it's just spot prices, you know, like gas stations and stuff like that. Anyway, let's see. And what we have basically like the uh, SPR crude oil is uh, as of the 22nd, 414.4 million uh, barrels of, of uh, oil. Uh, motor uh, gasoline, uh, 230.8 million of, uh, of, of that, uh, 107.3 million in, dist in distillant uh, fuel oil, all other oils, uh, 391.3 million uh, crude oil in SPR uh, is 556.1 uh, million, and total is 1696 .9. That looks like it to be down. Uh, looks like what three, three hundred. Uh, well, I'll just say three, it's by three. I'll just say that because <laughs> I don't really know how to really uh, go with the percentage as far as the part goes. But anyway, let's see. What exports? Let's see what they have in exports. Uh, I am on the by the way. I'm on the eia.gov website. I'm waiting for it to process now. Okay, so let's see. Da, 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 da. Ah, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna need to the uh, annual energy part. Okay, right. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm not seeing a number as far as upper goes. I had to uh, put a date, date range, which I'm not prepared to do right now. So there you go. Anyway, that's how I want. That's why I wanted to. Uh, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to say today as far as my sub, my Substack goes. Uh, if you enjoy this, uh, please subscribe. It's free. Or if you want to and you think I'm worth it, uh, subscribe for a little bit of cash. I'm not sure how much that is and 
we're going to do it, but I know you can subscribe for free. Uh, share this. Uh, go to realprogressors.org if you want to know more about MMT. And they have great articles on there as well and stuff of that nature. Uh, you can also check me out on YouTube. Um, I change my name a lot. So if you just put in uh, Just Calvin uh, Learning MMT, yeah, hopefully I'll bring it up. I have not uh, really done the uh, the key, uh, the there's a keyword portion of it yet. Uh, or you can go to uh, patreon.com slash just carbon learning MMT. And I do have at least one or uh, a couple of uh, content up there is free. Otherwise, you can set your own uh, amount that you, they would like to pay if you do want to pay. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good night. Um, share everything I do. <laughs> if you like it, please, please like it. Uh, but share it, comment. Uh, and check out again real progressives. Peace out for now. Hey, welcome back. Um, anyway, so this is the second story of the other day. Uh, Colorado accepts crypto to pay taxes. Now, this is a uh, interesting uh article i've been dying to read uh first of all the greg wrote i want to say roast sorry if i did that wrong i'll just say uh, greg as far as far goes but anyway so he writes uh colorado accepts crypto to pay taxes this was uh today which is good so it's up to date obviously digital currencies which includes the mirage of private cryptocurrencies or cryptos as well as central bank or cbdc's are all over the uh all over the both the both mainstream and alternative media they are being loved loathed misrepresented and misunderstood Governments around the world are dabbling with uh, either legitimizing or outlawing the new cur uh, curiosity. China, uh, El Salvador, and many other nations are working separately and in all uh, directions. Here in the United States, the National Conference of State Legislature reports that uh, 37 states and Puerto Rico have pending legislation in the 2022 legislative se session. Colorado is among the latest to stir the pot with the, govern the, uh, with the governor announcing that private quit uh, quit cryptos. cryptos will be accepted for state taxes and other fees starting this summer. Colorado's governor will turn around and sell them for, well, real money, a.k.a. U.S. dollars, of course. If you buy a car and trade in the old one, the car does not become currency. It was a trade asset for asset with the value of both being measured in money as would also be the case if you traded for the car using crypto. The car dealership has a motivation and infrastructure that makes accepting your car as payment sensible for them. But what is the sense in Colorado's decision? Replace crypto with the old car or with a non-fungible token, NFT. Your Beanie Baby collection, your timeshare, and then ask why Colorado will not be measuring and reselling those things in exchange for tax liabilities. Cryptos are not real money, and as the blockchain socialist recently stated on Mac Macron and Cheese, Part of the reason why I felt like I needed to make my blog and podcast is because of this fact that even if you try to look up the most basic te technological, technical, whatever, uh, understanding of how Bitcoin or blockchain works, 90% of the time aliens right wing libertarian. Accepting cryptocurrency is more like accepting stocks. While there is a significant diversity among them, they are mostly Ponzi based. In other words, real money from new investors is used to pay old investors. Eventually, someone is left holding the bag. Guess who that will be? The real the retail investors uh, like you, who traded $535 billion worth of crypto last year, or the institutional investor 
e.g. Wall Street, and that traded $1.14 trillion. Which one of them paid for the Super Bowl commercials? Which one received the bailouts when the housing bubble burst in 2008? These schemes lack stability. They lack monies, uh, legal security. They lack uh, sovereignty. These are exper experiments with new technologies that could prove invaluable down the road in applications such as the democratized finance, smart contracts, and much more. As of this writing, around 100 uh, different cryptocurrencies are traded on Coinbase. Like the blimps that preceded modern aircraft, one Hindenburg uh, will, get, will ground them all. The cryptocurrencies are just another type of asset and highly unstable ones at that. So what is real money? Well, when the federal government deficit spends, its so-called debt is actually the creation of high power money. There is no inherent need to delete it and it can be rolled over indefinitely when a financial institution issues loans eg credit cards loans and mortgages they have credit they have created new low power money which is designed with it with its deletion repayment with interest as the goal the two different sources are important but the money is indistinguishable while in circulation this describes the difference between public and private uh, United States debt. So, with that in mind, if you pay your federal taxes with the credit card or other loan, then you reduce then you've reduced the public debt and increased the private debt. But the number of dollars actually in circulation is unchanged. If you pay state taxes with a credit card or a loan, then the public debt is the same. The private debt increases and there are more dollars in circulation. If you pay federal taxes with cash or money in your bank account, the public debt goes down and so does the, the supply of dollars in circulation. If you were to pay your debt and state taxes with that same cash, then the debts and amount of dollars in circulation are unchanged because individual states such as Colorado are currency users, not issuers, just as you are. If Colorado wants to use digital currency in an in innovative way, they should adopt their own. Tax bids, uh, take bids, excuse me, take, take bids for the creation of a tailor-made nonprofit that was uh, that nonprofit that will create and manage a dollar fixed stable uh, coin that Colorado can use to achieve full employment. A coin with a central ledger for issuance and cancellation alongside what Rohan Gray describes as token-based hardwood uh, hardware, excuse me, based bearer instrument currency, e.g. stored value cards for the in-between transfers. The nonprofit would pay using the new coin the state's minima, a minimum wage, which should be higher to any Colorado that wanted a job. The coin uh, rapid acceptance and continued desirability in Colorado's economic could be encouraged by a small discount when it is used to pay state taxes and fees instead of using federal dollars as you would now. The state would pay for these for this discount with a boost in overall economic activity and conventional tax revenue that full employment would provide or with Peruvian taxes. I'm not really sure what that word is, but anyway, a complementary cryptocurrency powered not by speculation or scarcity, but by the state of Colorado's power to tax. Individual states' powers and individual states' powers of physical currency creation have long been revoked by our federal government. Metal coins in the Constitution and paper notes in later legislation and Supreme Court cases. However, these special laws are beyond um, archaic. What is basically just a small denomination, resaleable and a digital version of existing tax anticipation note is presently legal. Digital items den uh, denominated in amounts over uh, $1 issued in exchange for services rendered and with ex expiration dates 
would skirt a couple centuries of old laws and procedure uh, precedents. This puts full employment within the reach of each state. Since our federal government has abdicated this profess, profess responsibility and within the reach of many large municipalities on the sovereign spectrum that are less legally restricted than states. While perhaps not always on the scale of legalized full employment, these mechanisms could put smaller economic, economic mobilization or at the very least security in the hands of our, of our university networks, hospital systems, or other sources of what MMT scholars such as Professor Scott Ferguson call monetary agency. Professor Ferguson explained on Macron Cheese that uni, as we conceive it, would give credit creation capacity to cash-strapped public universities, which have been increasingly starved of funds by feckless state legislatures for decades. Uh, in quotes, extending what ha uh, Hockett and Amorova called the finance uh, franchise to public universities, the uni would end austerity and privatization in public universities. It would also, on our design, increase the democrati 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 democratic there you go, agency of faculty, staff, students, and surrounding uh, community members. Perhaps the most mind-blowing aspect of the uni, uh, furthermore, is what it demonstrates about the uh, pl plastic, plasticity <laughs> of <laughs> indigenous, uh, indigenous uh, credit creation. Okay. Anyway, the uni shows that no one is merely a passive user of currency, that credit always proceeds return, and that as a result, money as such is never driven by recycling revenue. This has tremendous implications for democratic monetary design, challenging us to imagine the credit systems that transcend not only revenue constraints, but also the profit motive. Instead of finance franchises, franchisees lending money that must be paid back, for example, we can establish granting institutions that disperse credit not according to a logic of quantitative back payback, but rather through a quantitative logic of com communal and environmental obligation. Crucially, we think the uni can serve as a generalizable model for similar projects elsewhere, revealing MMT's still un un untapped potential for political and economic transformation in unexpected ways. Why is Colorado doing what they are what they're doing instead of what they could be doing? One hand washes the other. In addition to further fueling the frenzy around these right-wing libertarian experiments, the scale and set and seasonably or sorry, seasonality of Colorado's taxes provides a new feeding ground for both day traders and crypto arbitrage bo uh, bo bots. <clears throat> Excuse me. Colorado Governor Jeff Polis is one of Americans, uh, America's e uh, every reason to be cozy and sub subservient towards uh, Wall Street. Oh wait, I I skipped a beat. Uh, America's wealthiest po politician, while he says he is not personally invested in crypto, he certainly has every reason to be cozy and subservient and subservient towards Wall Street. There we go. Whatever the inventors are investors uh, or investors of these cryptocurrencies had in mind, selfish or selfless, no matter what good and bad things were accomplished on the way now uh, on the way, now their creations have largely been captured and tamed by the same old monsters. It is time for us to reimagine these technologies, not as a way to create a scare and create scarcity, not for another lottery of haves and have nots, not a new digital means for uh, aristocracy but to steal, but rather as a tool to improve all of society, learn monetary theory, and let us get to work fixing this mess. 
And once again, this was by Greg Roest. I want to say Roest. I apologize if I get the name wrong. Anyway, but that'll, be, that'll do it for the day. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me try my hardest to get through certain words. And I guess the voice changed <laughs> during the reading aspect of this program. Uh, on my on my Substack, I will be reading another one, uh, another uh, article. And I can't remember uh, what the article is about right now, but what I can do is tell you that uh, uh, someone on Twitter uh, asked me to, well, not asked, didn't, did not ask me, but shared it. And I felt inspired to, to read it and do a show on it. So that would be on my Substack at Calvin Taylor dot substack dot com and as always uh, subscribe to this channel uh subscribe to real progressives dot org uh support them support me as part of the podcast as well and also uh substack has a free email uh subscription so try that out uh you can try me out as part of the podcast as well either way i hope you guys have a good night and learn mmt and buy this shirt while you're at it peace out for now